dishonest, needy, pathetic, physical, arrogant, they want what they want when they want it, cocky, lazy, impatient, perverted. These were the words in my behavior modification class that the girls used to describe men when my professor asked. I've spoken to the girls in my class before about how when Keith and I started dating, he asked my parents even to date me, and then again if he could marry me. I told him about how we stayed pure until marriage and how he never forced, tried, or even asked me to compromise myself. Now that I'm married, I still tell them about how Keith holds the car door open for me, helps me around the house, and takes care of me. On Easter, I watched as man of God after man of God after man of God stood up here telling testimonies of the martyrs of the Bible. I couldn't believe how many men of God there are here at Building on the Rock, and it literally brought tears to my eyes. I was confused and dumbfounded at the answers the girls in my class gave me, gave my professor. But the girls in my class have never seen the men that I know. They don't know Nick Peterson and Ronnie Spicer, who are teenagers with more character and integrity than most 40-year-olds. They don't know Lou and Joe DeFalco that'll put their own desires aside protect, to protect their purity and the purity of others. They don't know men like Pat, Mark, Joe Saratelli, Steve Forsythe, Brandon Burkhart, Pastor Nate, and Pastor Bruce, who will all devote themselves to Christ as he prepares for them their brides. They haven't seen men like Chris, John Restivo, Steve Doughty. Men like them pray for, wait for, and love the women God put before them, even during times when things seem hopeless. Anthony Carta, Joey Steffer, Brian Elias, and Frank Hurley lead their families in the way of Christ. My dad, Chris DM, Fred, and Scott Carge use their gifts to serve others. Aslan and Jerry pray for and hold the car doors for women. Little Joseph Steffer will throw away his entire Harry Potter collection just because he felt like God told him to. The girls in my class haven't seen Pastor Bob run eight miles at boot camp with crushed bones in his feet for the sake of leading, teaching, and encouraging those around him. Wow. If the girls only knew the men I know, maybe their opinions would be different. In James chapter 3, it says, For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and the good fruit, impartial and sincere. The Bible also says that by our deeds, the world will know we are his. And let me tell you, the world can see the difference. On behalf of the women in, in the church, I want to thank all of you men for living pure lives for Christ. Amen.